From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Inspector Hardiger of the Zurich Police, Herr Dollar. Hi, Inspector. Where are you? Downstairs, in the lobby of the inn. I came up from Zurich to see if that picture postcard I sent you was of help in locating the stolen diamonds. Afraid not, Inspector. I located the chalet on the postcard, all right. It's sort of a shelter for skiers up on a ridge. Well? Well, when I got there, the place had been turned upside down. If the diamonds were hidden there, somebody sure beat me to it. I see. So it looks like we're at a dead end. Perhaps not. What do you mean? You recall that in Zurich, a large man attacked you thinking that you had the diamonds? Recall it? I've still got the lumps to prove it. What about him? A man answering that description bought a railroad ticket here to Kleibach last night. Oh? We have reason to believe that he is somewhere here in the village now. That could mean that the diamonds that he and you are looking for are here after all. I'll be right down, Inspector. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Global Casualty in Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Location, Clybox, Switzerland. Expense account continued. Item 9, 70 cents. One pot of coffee for Inspector Honiger and myself at the Clybox Inn. Ah, most perplexing case, Herr Dollar. A skillfully timed robbery of the uncut diamonds at the Zurich airport last week. And then these puzzling postcards supposedly giving the location of the diamonds. Yeah, they've got to be the key, Inspector. If we can only figure them out. Look, we know now that Sebastian was in on the robbery and was trying to negotiate secretly for the return of the stones. Yeah, and he told you before he was murdered that the postcard he gave you was a part of the key to the location of the diamonds. That's right. It was signed by a man named Gruner. And according to Ilsa Schaefer, Gruner was a friend of Sebastian's. Her description of Gruner matches one of the men in the robbery at the airport. And what of this young lady, Ilse Schaefer? What do you make of her? Well, that's a, a good question, Inspector. I, I wish I knew the answer. I hope she's in the clear. Hope? Oh, oh I see. All right, so I'm normal. Uh, yeah, she is a very attractive young lady. But there is also the chance that she is involved... That she killed Sebastian. I know. I know. She could be involved or she could be innocent. It's a 50-50 proposition, I guess. Pay your money and take your choice. More coffee, Inspector? Please. Thank you. Uh, what is her story? Well, I finally got her to admit she didn't share my cab in Zurich and leave her purse in it just by coincidence. It was Sebastian's idea to make it look like she'd passed something along to me. But why would Sebastian wish to make it appear that you had the diamonds if he was trying to negotiate with you for their return? That does not make sense. Actually, I think it does, Inspector. It could go together this way. After the robbery, the gang split up. Gruner was to hide the diamonds, then get word to Sebastian as to their location. Of this much, we are fairly certain. Okay, okay. But now, Sebastian gets the bright idea of double-crossing his buddies. He gets in touch with the insurance company I represent, and they send me to Zurich to negotiate with him. I still do not... In the meantime, though, another outfit has moved into the picture and is trying to grab the stones from Sebastian and his boys. Yeah. Yeah, that would explain many things. Sure, sure it would. That's why he rigged that deal with Ilsa in my taxi cab to make it look to the other outfit like I had the stones. That would take them off his neck for a while. Yeah, he was playing me for a patsy. But I've got to admit, it was a pretty fair scheme. Then later, Sebastian contacts you and gives you the first postcard. Mm -hmm. He tells you it is part of the key to the location of the diamonds. That's right. But Sebastian didn't move fast enough, so he wound up dead. But uh, his confederate Gruner sent him a second card. Oh, probably mail before Sebastian was killed. It is possible. Now... The first postcard is a picture of this Kleibach Inn. Yeah, and according to Watto, the innkeeper, it's not the best picture of the inn. I asked him about Gruner. He said he thought he'd heard the name somewhere, but that Gruner hadn't been a guest here. Perhaps he is down in the village. Well, I'm going to check that today. 
But if the diamonds are in the village, why the postcard of the inn? And why the second postcard of the ski hut on the ridge? I do not know. Is there anybody here at the inn that you suspect of being an accomplice of Gruner and Sebastian? Ilsa Schaefer, for one. She claims Sebastian told her he'd meet her here in a few days for some skiing. I see. Anyone else? An Englishman named Jeffrey Harris. He seems pretty interested in me. Claims he thought I was a friend of his from London. He might be telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, he might be. But I found out he likes to climb mountains. And he was up there somewhere this morning when Ilsa and I were skiing and got shot at. Do you think Fräulein Schaefer could have maneuvered you into that position? Well, if she did, she had a lot of confidence in the marksmanship of her buddy in the rocks. And you told me she suggested a route of escape which ended suddenly at a, a cliff. Which I almost went off of. Yeah, yeah, Inspector, I hate to say it, but she could be the one. And I've got to find out one way or the other. Which means I'm going to stick pretty close to her for the time being. I gather that prospect is not entirely unpleasant to you. But be careful here, Dollar. She could be dangerous. So could Jeffrey Harris. On my way to the ski hut this afternoon, I spotted him down the mountain from me. And the ski hut had been torn apart. Yeah. If the diamonds were there, they're gone now. And Harris could be the boy who beat me to them. If he or anybody attempts to leave Kleibach... One of my men at the railroad station will report it. Well, I must be getting back to Zurich, Herr Dollar. Who knows? Perhaps these postcards are just decoys. And the stones are still in Zurich? No. No, I bet my bottom dollar they're here in Kleibach somewhere. If I could only figure out the meaning of those postcards. Yeah. Otherwise, why would the man who attacked you in Zurich have come here? He must be hiding out in the village somewhere. Well... Perhaps I can turn up something else of help in Zurich. Right now, Inspector, anything would be of help, believe me. After Inspector Honegger left, I studied the postcards again, but I got nowhere. One of the inn, the other the ski hut. What did they mean? I went out on the balcony outside my room and looked up at the mountains. But I couldn't see the ski hut from there. A ridge was in the way. I did see something else, though. Three rooms down the balcony, Jeffrey Harris's French doors were open. His room was empty. So I decided to have a look. I wasn't sure just what I was looking for. Something, anything that would indicate whether or not Harris was involved in the whole thing. I worked my way to the closet, turning up one big nothing. His clothes were hung neatly in place, and in one corner was stacked some climbing gear. I reached around behind it, and my hand touched metal. I pulled it into view. A rifle with a telescopic sight. I sniffed at the barrel. The gun had been fired recently. Ah, good evening, Herr Dollar. Hello, Otto. Look, have you seen Jeffrey Harris lately? The Englishman? Not since late afternoon. All day long he was out climbing the mountain. Yeah, I know. He no sooner got back than he went out again. Before dinner. It was a good dinner tonight, too. Any idea where he went? None. Could be in the village. Look, tell me something. When he arrived here at your inn, did he have a gun case in his luggage? Mm, he had a lot of climbing equipment, but I did not notice a gun case. Well, he could have taken it apart and packed it in his suitcase. Why do you ask, Herr Dollar? Hmm. Oh, skip it. I'll see you later, Otto. Johnny. Oh. Hello, Elsa. I've been looking for you. Yeah? Have you been able to find out who are shooting at us up on the ridge this morning? I'm not sure yet. You still do not trust me, do you? I don't know, Elsa. What can I do to prove to you that I am not involved? In what? Anything. The diamond robbery, the murder of Sebastian, the attempt on your life this morning. I I like you, Johnny. I don't want you thinking such things about me. Look, let's uh, let's talk about it later on. Why not now? I have to go into the village. Well, Perhaps I could go with you, Johnny. Do you mind? No. Matter of fact, that might be a good idea. Nice in the village tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Quiet, too. You seem to to be looking for something, Johnny. For someone, Elsa. Who? The Englishman, Jeffrey Harris. Oh, 
You told me you'd never seen him before you came here to Kleibach. That is right. Then he wasn't a friend of Sebastian's. Oh, not as far as I know. Well, an hour ago in Harris's room, I found a rifle with a telescopic sight. You mean that Harris is the one who shot at you this morning? Otto, the innkeeper, told me Harris went mountain climbing today. I saw him on his way down late this afternoon. But he isn't at the inn now. You think he's down here in the village? Maybe. That's why. What's the matter? Hold it, Elsa. Well, well. Looks like maybe the village isn't so quiet after all. What do you mean? I think somebody's following us. What? Come on, now. Start walking in. Yeah. Where? Across the street and back away in the shadows. Oh, what are you going to do, John? Figure out a way. Wait a minute. That alley up ahead will turn into it. Oh, John. Don't turn your head, Elsa. Okay, into the alley now. Good. He can't see us here. Who do you think it is? I don't know. Bruner, Jeffrey, Harris, even the guy who jumped me back in Zurich thinking I had the diamonds. Keep going. You think he'll come into this alley? That's what I'm hoping. All right, now here we are. The doorway here will do very nicely. Look, you'll see. You keep going down the alley. Cut across to the next street and go back to the inn. But what are you going to do? Wait for him. Go on now, go on. No, Johnny. Look, you do as I... I want to stay with you. Don't be silly. It could get a little rough around here all of a sudden. Uh, There's nothing you can do here, Elsa. So do what I tell you. Now get moving. Now. She looked at me a moment, then went down the alley and out of sight. A couple of minutes went by. Nothing. Then I heard steps. He was approaching the alley, whoever he was. Now he was at the entrance. I pressed back into the doorway. A few more feet and... Oh, wait a minute. He decided not to bite. I edged out of the doorway and back to the mouth of the alley. Then I stuck my head around the corner. Nobody. He must have ducked into a building or down the street. It sounded like Ilsa for the next street. I cut through the alley. Then I spotted a couple of people in front of a small hotel down the street. They were jabbering excitedly. There was a man crumpled up on the ground. Ilsa saw me and ran over. Johnny. Oh, Johnny. What's the matter, Ilsa? He fell out of the upstairs window. Almost in front of me. Who is it? It's it's Sebastian's friend, Gruner. Gruner. The guy who'd been writing postcards to Sebastian. Gruner. The only man in the world who knew where the diamonds were hidden. My one lead. Dead. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the wind-up. I find out some people will not hesitate to kill anyone who gets in their way. And that's not so good when the man in the way is me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 